<sighs> you know, if somebody had told me these things earlier, things would have been so much easier. And I'm about to share them with you. In this video, I wanna share with you five different things that nobody will tell you when you're starting a podcast. Maybe you've started one already or you are about to start your own podcast. Either way, make sure you watch this video all the way through because not only I'm gonna tell you these five things, which unfortunately are all bad things, I'm also gonna share with you through advice that I've learned over the last decade of podcasting, how to counter each of these five bad things. And at the end, I'm gonna share with you a specific strategy that has worked crazy for myself and my students for getting more reviews, which is really important for your podcast. So make sure to stick around for that. It'll be working for you guaranteed. Hey, my name is Pat Flynn, host of the Smart Passive Income podcast started in 2010. I've since recorded over 1600 episodes, have amassed over 65 million downloads. And the one thing I've learned to start off with is podcast analytics are terrible. They, they suck really bad. Let's go over the list. You get uh, from your podcast host, you get the number of downloads. Um, and plays, which is kind of the same thing. And that's kind of it. Now you also get some information like what device people are playing these podcasts on and you know what country they might be in. Yeah, it's, it's not a lot to work with, especially if you've been on YouTube and you've seen the analytics here, which is just kind of insane. It's a little overwhelming in fact, but in the podcast world, we're still catching up. Fortunately, things seem to be moving in the right direction with Apple's Podcast Connect. And same thing with Google Podcast Manager. But overall, we just don't have that much to work with. So how do we improve our show? How do we get better? How do we take what we do have access to and improve ourselves? Well, here's the trick. We want to trend upward. We want more downloads over time. Not every episode will be downloaded more than the last. Hopefully that would be awesome. But generally speaking, you want an upward curve that would allow for some sort of trends in growth. That's how you know that you're doing things right. Pay attention to the episodes that seem to be standing out and getting more popular or have more downloads. Do more of that. Do less of the ones that have less downloads. Number two, just starting a podcast does not mean you're going to get listeners. Back in the old days, by old days, I mean like 2010, you could get a podcast up and you'd get featured in new and noteworthy for eight weeks and you get a ton of downloads right away. And now with over a million podcasts, which in the scheme of things isn't a lot, but it's definitely saturated right now. Doesn't mean you can't succeed though. You have to work a little bit harder to gain listeners. Just putting it up there. If you build it, they're not gonna come. Ray, people will come, Ray. Now there are a few instances and a lot of rare cases where people who do put a podcast up and they literally do no extra work and they amass a ton of downloads. That is possible kind of anywhere, right? But there's some things you can do to increase your likelihood of getting listeners. Number one, make sure that when you launch your show, you make a big deal out of it. Utilize your network, your social media following, family, friends, whatever. Make some noise the moment that you launch. Number two, a great way to grow your show is to be a guest on other people's shows. So do that. People are already listening and they can follow you and subscribe from there. And number three, just realize that it's going to take some time. You've got to stay consistent. And this takes us to number three, Trace. Nobody's going to tell you how hard it is to stay consistent with your content. Yes, you can get excited at the start of your podcast journey with maybe 10 episodes. You got them out there. You're fired up. We call that the honeymoon period of podcasting where things are exciting and you're going to work a little bit harder. But once you start to see that maybe the results aren't where you want them to be, or it starts to get hard because you're editing every show and then life starts to get in the way, you might experience what's called pod fade. We don't want you to pod fade away. That consistency is really key to show up every single week or twice a week or however often you choose to come out with your show. That's what will help your audience understand when to expect your show to come out and guarantee more likely at least that a person will continue to listen to you over time. The best way to counter this is to plan ahead. So get ahead on your content calendar, figure out what those episodes are gonna be about, figure out who you want to have on your show as a guest so you can schedule things ahead of time and never feel like you're in that content hamster wheel that we all feel on where once you hit publish, when you should be celebrating, you're already worried about the next episode coming out and you have no time to market your show. You can counter that by getting ahead, planning ahead. Number four, social media is probably the number one way that people are trying to grow their show. And it's actually a terrible, terrible strategy. Don't get me wrong, posting your episodes on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, etc. It's smart, you, you might as well do that but it's not going to give you the growth that you're looking for. Here's why. When you share on social media, guess who's seeing it? 
everybody who already follows you. Yes, you might get a few retweets or have a few people share it, but it's not necessarily going to give you that landslide group of people who are going to come who have never found you before. That's what we want to have. The way to get more people to come on your show who have yet to discover you is not through social media. It's by getting elsewhere where other groups of people exist. This might be being a guest on another person's podcast. It might be being featured in a forum or group within a social media platform. It might be speaking on stage or sharing your podcast at an event or a virtual event that you might be speaking at. It might be creating content that is niched down in such a way that people within that niche start spreading the word for you. This in fact happened to me in episode 96 of the Smart Passive Income podcast when I created an episode to help people who did art, like sculpting, painting, drawing, etc., make more money online. That was interesting because I didn't think that that episode was going to go very well, but that year, that was the number one most downloaded episode in my archive. Why? Because people started to share it with other people like them too. So niching down actually can help you grow your show too. Yeah, just relying on social media and in fact, a lot of people who repurpose their show, meaning taking the audio or maybe even filming it and then posting it on social media or sharing like a videogram or something like that on social media, guess what? You're probably spending a lot more time and money sharing your show with people who already know your show exists. How might you find other people have already shared you that information? So take that and use it. And number five, the thing that they're not going to tell you is that getting reviews is like pulling teeth. It's hard and it hurts like in Tom Hanks in Castor. You could ask your listeners all day in every single episode and you still might not get people to leave a review. Two important things here, including my best tip to help you get more reviews. But first, let me start with one thing. Reviews, you might not see all of them that might come in because you're only seeing reviews that come in from your home country or wherever your home country is for your podcast on Apple, for example. In order to see other countries' reviews of your show, you'd have to actually go to the Apple store for that country to see it. There is a workaround, however. I recommend checking out podkite dot com hashtag not sponsored it's just a great tool that'll help you actually collate and actually see all those different reviews from all those different countries in one spot and i think it's free i don't remember the price plan right now but i think you can claim one podcast at least your podcast for free right now again podkite.com now for what you've been waiting for how might you get more reviews like i said just asking your general audience on the podcast or even on social media hey please leave a review for me please 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 not going to work out very well. Here's what I'd recommend you do. It's a two-step process. Step one, on social media or in your email, send a message that says, who here has listened to the latest episode and what was a big lesson that you took away from it? Or something of that nature where you get people to essentially raise their hand and say, oh yeah, I, I listened to the show. Um, I thought it was awesome. Okay, good. You got people saying, yes, I listened to the show. The second step is reaching out to each of those people who reply individually in a direct message on that social media platform. So let's say I do this on Instagram, right? And then I see people reply. I'm gonna take my phone, I'm gonna direct message them, and I'm gonna send them a video. I promise you, the video works better than anything. Number one, people are gonna be blown away that you, the podcast host of the podcast they listen to, is reaching out individually to them. Plus, you already know that they like the show or else they wouldn't have raised their hand. So when you ask them individually like this, Hey, Jim, thanks so much for listening to the podcast. I saw your comment on the other post there. Um, It would be really cool if you just had a moment to leave a review on Apple. It would be really, really helpful for the show, and it helps others understand the kind of value that I have to provide. Thank you so much for listening. This will get a very high response rate. And again, it'll blow people's mind. This individual reach out. Yes, some things are not scalable in business, and that's okay. You want more reviews, do that. I guarantee it's going to work. So those are five things that they're not going to tell you. Who's they? Well, not people like me because I just told you. What did we learn? Number one, podcast analytics are poo-poo. Number two, just starting a podcast does not guarantee listeners. You're going to have to be consistent, work hard, reach out, and actually market your show too. Number three, creating content consistently is a hard thing to do. Let's get ahead. Plan ahead on your calendar. Make it a little bit easier on yourself. Number four, social media not so great at growing your show. Yes, it's a great reminder for people who've already found you, but I want you to see how you might be able to reach out to new groups of people who have yet to find and listen to your podcast. And number five, reviews are tough to get. 
and they're not all put in one spot. Podkite.com plus the two-step strategy that I just shared with you. Now, I teach a lot of people how to podcast, and if you'd like a cheat sheet to make sure you're doing all the right things with your show, whether you're just getting started or you've been starting already, all you have to do is go to smartpassiveincome.com slash podcast cheat sheet, all one word, smartpassiveincome.com slash podcast cheat sheet. The link is down in the description below as well. And let me know which one of these five things was most interesting to you. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to, uh, to pop in here every once in a while and answer your questions too. My goal is to help you start your podcast and succeed with it too. Cannot wait to continue to help you moving forward. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I look forward to reading your comments. Cheers, peace out. And as always, Team Flynn for the win.